Hey everybody, it's Kristen Smedley, author of the book Thriving Blind and the, I don't know, host of the community here on Facebook, Thriving Blind, with another interview in our new series of, what else? Thriving Blind. See, we just kind of keep it all one little theme here so nobody has to really remember anything when they're reading and they're recording. So I am, I, okay, everybody's got to like get comfortable although you're gonna end up on the edge of your seat with our guest today because I, I'm, I'm kind of nervous because I'm, with a, I'm in the presence of a rock star, gotta keep my cool, and I can feel my daughter somewhere rolling her eyes that I'm about to talk to somebody so cool, and of course she thinks I'm nowhere near as cool as this guy. So I'm joined today with Kai Owens, who I am gonna let the interview go on and you'll find out the details of Kai's incredibly cool life. Um, and I know that you're going to want to start following on social media during this interview. Hold all clicking till the end, please, because you're going to want to go see all of his videos and the stuff that he does if you aren't following him already. So Kai, I am so psyched that you're able to, first of all, fit in some time to chat with us today because you're a busy guy and that you took the time to do it. So thanks so much for joining us. Awesome. Yeah, I, I appreciate having me on here. Cool. Oh, man. See, I almost said cool beans. I was trying to coach myself before I got on with you. Don't say anything nerdy like my kids Dude, cool would say. Don't say nerdy. that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a cool beans kind of person. Okay, so let's start us off with, so for the folks that don't know you yet, um, give us a little uh, what grade you're in, um, age, what your visual condition is, th those kinds of info for, for like the basics for people to get to know you. Yeah, for sure. So um, I'm Kai, as you said. I'm a 10th grader in a public school. I've got a degenerative eye disease called retinitis pigmentosa, which basically is uh, where your retina basically just slowly deteriorates. And uh, I've got a little bit of vision left. I've got like five or so degrees in each eye. Um, really bad night blindness and light sensitivity. So that's kind of that's kind of where we're at on that that stage. Okay, so that's perfect because I actually was going to ask this later. I was going to do all the nitty gritty stuff that all the parents and teachers want to know, but I'm not doing that yet. We got to jump right to you. Just said five degrees of vision, and yeah. tell everybody how I know you from from your mom and Instagram and all that. What are you? What's your big uh, famousness here? What is it that you do? Um. So. I am the world's first sponsored legally blind skimboarder. Yes, that's so great. <laughs> that's so great. Okay, so you know everybody's going, wait a minute. How is that even possible? Okay, I've tried skimboarding. And yeah. when I realized that my kids were grabbing their phones to take videos of the idiocy, I stopped. I am a mess. And I tried surfing. My son Michael had to coach me through that. That was another, don't want any video of that. Tell us how you came upon skimboarding. I mean, to give us a little journey here. Yeah. Um, well, my family, we grew up, well, I grew up in Atlanta, and uh, we basically take trips down to a place in Georgia called Tybee Island. And uh, whenever I was like three or four, and uh, my brother was a little older, he was like seven or eight, and uh, he had always been into skateboarding, so we had skateboards around, so I started on that. And then we'd go to the beach and we we're like, well, what can we do to have fun? But we still like skateboarding and skimboarding was kind of the thing that's similar to that. So whenever we'd go down to the beach for like a trip or something, we would just have some wooden skimboards and just mess around on them the whole time. And uh, that basically just turned into doing that every time we'd go to the beach. And then we moved to uh, around Savannah, Georgia. And now we're even closer to Tybee Island, so we go down there all the time. And I picked it up. It was basically just like a, a full-time hobby, I guess you could say. <laughs> well, okay. So part of me, because I've raised two blind kids, can, can sort of get my head around the early years when you were way closer to the ground and closer to that skim board being able to see it. But how much of it can you – do you see any of that board in the water now? Um, I think technically I can, but I don't really use it for that anymore. Um, I've basically just gotten it, like, I've done it so many times at this point that it's all just in muscle memory, uh, um, for the most part. So I'm not even 
really looking at where I drop my board or anything when I'm skimboarding now. Really? But don't you, with skimboarding, so for those that aren't familiar, aren't you like throwing the board ahead of yourself in the water and running and jumping onto it? So that's what it is at like the like kind of like basic levels of it. But then uh, as it gets more advanced, uh, there's there's kind of two branches. So there's flatland skimboarding, which is what most people know about. And then there's wave skimboarding, which is basically like riding, like sliding out to the waves and then kind of surfing them back in and doing like skateboard tricks. <laughs> uh, yeah, which sounds ridiculous. And uh, but when you're when you're doing that, you actually the way pretty much everyone drops their board is you drop it and you take about one step um, to get on your board. Or uh, there's another method which I learned from kind of my skimboarding mentor and uh, world champion Austin Keene, who grew up on Tybee Island. Uh, and there's it's called the monkey crawl, where uh, you, you're you're holding the board the whole time, and you're basically full sprint, and then like bend down, put your board on the water, and like kind of slide onto it, and it's a really weird looking motion. But then you don't let go of your board at all, so it's just, like, in your hands the whole time until you're standing on it. That's so cool. It's fascinating to watch your videos on Instagram and watching you do that. And now I didn't even realize that your vision was only five degrees of vision. I thought you had a little more than that. So how do you handle the waves coming at you and know when to turn or ride i'm trying to i'm trying to go yeah. with the lingo that i know nothing about i just remember when i was surfing i couldn't even figure out when to go with the wave yeah um i i honestly have a hard time explaining this because it's really difficult to like make other people like understand what i'm trying to say because mm -hmm. it's like the best way i can explain it is that everything in the ocean is patterns even if like they're like really complex and everything, everything's set up in like sets of waves, and within those sets of waves, there's generally like uh, if you like know the spot you're going to be at. So I always skimboard at the same beaches for the most part, unless we're traveling. And then at those beaches, if you know like the tide and you kind of uh, like watch with the vision I have and listen for a while, you can figure out where the waves are like breaking. Hmm. And then you can figure out, like, the spacing between them and then, like, the lulls between the sets of waves. And uh, I kind of use those patterns as well as a little bit of my vision to figure out where the waves that I'm trying to get are setting up. And then once I know that pattern, it's pretty much consistent for, for the most part with small changes the whole time I'm there. And then I can just use that to basically know where I need to be and when. That's so cool. And, you know, I do remember when we were learning to surf and my Michael, who was probably only maybe 11 at the time, and he was like, dude, there's a, there's a rhythm here. Like, why can't he saying to me, why can't you figure out? Because I was watching it to know when to come up. And he was like, no, there's, of course, I have no patience, right? I'm like, no patience. And he always says to me, Michael always says that um, us sighted people are so distracted because there's so many things to look at. And we're not doing exactly what you're saying, figuring out that there's patterns and rhythm and, and focusing and then knowing when to go. Okay, so yeah. now maybe, maybe I'll slow down when I'm at the ocean and, and take a listen for patterns before i am pretty good at boogie boarding though maybe that would help me to figure out the pattern i won't get slammed you know yeah <laughs> when all my nieces and nephews that are real little are like oh they're little ones and they're like here comes Aunt Kristen. she's going to get slammed under a wave again okay i'll have to pay attention at the ocean so let's go um maybe away from the fun stuff for a second because we'll have to yeah. and let's talk about i know all the parents that are watching are going to be asking about um what kinds of tools you use you said you're a sophomore Yes. Correct. Are you in school for the blind or regular public school? I'm in a regular public school. Okay. So um, for the most part, has that been a positive experience? Um, for the most part, yes. But there's definitely some obvious challenges we've had to go through in just getting accessible materials, as is kind of the case with most uh, blind or visually impaired kids at public school. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. So let's dive into that just a little bit. Um, are you Braille, large print, or audio is your primary? Uh, kind of a mix of Braille and audio. So I use um, Braille materials for, like, notes and, like, tactile graphics for, like, math and science. 
Mm -hmm. But then if I'm in like an English class, I'll use like a JAWS screen reader and like a Word documents and just type on a normal keyboard. Okay. And that works out. That works out. For, I think I, I think we went audio in, in high school also a little more audio because there was just so much to keep up with and trying to get the braille versions of things was yeah. a challenge half the time. Are you doing um, math classes? Yes, I am. I'm in uh, next semester. I've got, honors advanced algebra and I just got done with advanced analytic geometry I think yeah oh man good old geometry <laughs> yeah. that's like that the adapted that. teacher's worst nightmare having to adapt all those graphs oh Is that what you do it in tactile yeah I did it all that entire class I did in braille and tactile yeah that's a tricky one so when yes. when has has your have you been visually impaired your whole life or did it just come on at, at a certain point? So I had perfect vision until about third grade and then uh, I had to get glasses and then glasses didn't fully fix it hmm. and then I started going to like all the doctors and testing trying to figure it out and then I was about like 10 or so when I got diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa. Okay so you're a so wow let me just take it in for a second so and remember i'm a mom here so this like falls hard on me that you you were perfect vision until third grade so that's when you're learning all the print and alphabet and everything and then you have to switch gears for a few years there but yet you just said that your classes are advanced and accelerated so you stuck with it that must have been do you remember those years of was it a was it a hard transition over those late elementary years oh yeah that was that was definitely definitely a hard um i was doing classes uh like braille and orientation mobility classes like once or twice a week for like three or four summers and i was doing stuff like every single day in school trying to learn braille with uh my tbi it was a uh, it was definitely a difficult process to do all that on top of just trying to figure out school in the first place yeah and figure out your declining vision too it must have just been like coming at you from all angles yeah it definitely was so wow so i'll tell you what though for everybody that's watching what a cool thing though i mean you're sitting here you like light up when you talk and you're this this happy comfortable in his in his skin kid right or guy i guess yeah. and um but it didn't start out that way so that is it's it's such a great message for folks that yeah there are challenges especially for you in in those years of where you start to like really get to know your stuff third fourth fifth grade you get a handle on reading speed and all that and you had to completely switch gears so so yeah. you um so do you have memories i guess then of of being able to see some things um i can still see like general ideas of what's happening mm -hmm. but i can't see like any details now pretty much um so like if i were to try and read print at like a normal size like i could maybe read like three or four words a minute yeah uh, but I can still, I still have like a pretty good idea on how things look for the most part, so. Good, good. And you probably get to call back on some of your memory of, of things as well. Well, that's, yeah. that's interesting. It really is cool to, to see you on the other side of that transition in uh, such a positive and high achieving way that you didn't just kind of survive it all. You literally ended up thriving and are, are doing so well in school. Do you have plans yet for what you want to do after high school or thoughts um, on it? So, as you kind of mentioned earlier, I'm a, I'm a drum set player in a couple bands. Um, in a couple bands. You say it like it's like, you know, whatever. I, I, I tried to learn the drums. I lasted about five minutes and chucked the sticks. It's way harder yeah, than it looks. <laughs> it's very, very difficult to start on. Um, so, I'm thinking right now that I'm probably going to uh, go to a college for, uh, like, recording engineering and uh, drum set performance. Um, so like major in recording and uh, sound engineering, and then probably end up uh, working in like music studios and like playing with some bands and stuff. That's kind of the, that's kind of the goal right now. Oh man, it sounds like, uh, are you looking at Belmont University yet? You ought to take a look at that. Um, I've looked at that some, I've looked at uh, like University of Miami's like Frost School of Music, 
uh, NYU, Berkeley. So a lot of the big ones I've tried, I've checked out. Very good. Well, it sounds like Miami would be right there with your, uh, the waves are, are right close by, I would assume, huh? That yeah, you can still be out there in the water. Yep. That's, yeah, that's, that would be, that's the, that's the goal. <laughs> so what's, um, what is your favorite, I know that you're a sophomore and probably don't have many favorite things about school, but if you had to select one, because I'm thinking about my son Mitch is, is, you know, a sophomore also, there's not a whole heck of a lot that his favorite thing about school. Um, what's your favorite subject? Probably science. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, I've probably, yeah, definitely science, I'd say. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Okay, so, you know, people tend to think that um, blindness is, you know, it's tough and, and there's so much hardship to it. And we're always like, well, once you have all the tools and resources under your belt, you know, then it kind of falls in the background. But um, what would you say, we call them here blind perks, you know, things that uh, are some pretty cool advantages for somebody that, that is visually impaired or blind. Do you have any um, any thoughts on what might be the bright side of blindness uh, I think I think for me the I'd say there's there's two two good two very good things and they might be small but they're they're pretty funny uh, <laughs> so, so number one I'd say uh, being able to make a whole new a whole new genre of comedy of blind jokes <laughs> God you sound like my voice <laughs> yeah I mean if you got to deal with it, might as well make some jokes out of it. Very good. Um, and then second one, I'd say um, you get to, you kind of get in a lot of kind of like funny situations and you get to like experience things like completely different than other people. Um, and you also can get some chances to like meet some really cool people if you, if you kind of work your angles. <laughs> I like that. Work the angles. I like that one. Very good. And you're exactly right. I mean, you know, years ago, my oldest son, Michael, started doing the whole joking thing, you know, cracking <laughs> jokes about being blind and everything. But I'll tell you what, and you probably noticed the same thing. It puts people at ease. Like, yeah. right away, it just it just demolishes that whole barrier of, ah, I don't want to say the wrong thing. And then you guys come out and say something ridiculous. And yeah. it just eliminates that. Yeah, that's been, it's been pretty positive for us too. That really makes people comfortable. Yeah, it definitely does. Very good. So, so we'll just, uh, we'll follow up with, a, or fo follow up, wrap it up. Come on, Kristen. Haven't had enough coffee today. Um, with a couple of things, what would you, in your, you know, wise old age here of sophomore in high school, what would you, what would some advice be to a parent that maybe has a young blind child, they're just dealing with the diagnosis now, and they're not quite sure what to expect, what would just uh, a bit of advice be to that parent, if you have any? Um, I'd see a, I'd say one, uh, push push to learn braille no matter what any mm. like school systems say that is the number one reason i'm able to do as well as i do in school um and two i'd say just don't don't let uh like your fears as a parent get in the way of like letting your kid succeed um because I, i've heard so many stories of parents just like not letting their uh, visually impaired or blind kids do anything even though the kids have all the tools that they need to to accomplish pretty much anything they want to. That's excellent. That's, that's excellent advice. And I hope that people heed that advice because you're right. I mean, it's, we can't put our own um, fears on our, on our kids. And that's why I wanted to do this series and especially to have you on as early as possible because you are out there doing something that people would consider, you know, a lot of parents have fear of sending their, their sighted kids out to try stuff like that. And you're yeah. just out there doing it and um, making it work and having a good time and having a lot of success with it. So it's really cool. So where can, where can folks find you on social media to check all your great stuff out? Yeah. So I'm on Instagram primarily. Uh, kind of starting a Facebook that I'm just now starting to get going, but I am uh, on Instagram at Kai.Owens, so K-A-I dot O-W-E-N-S. 
and uh, I post pretty much every day on there, uh, either like drumming or music stuff or skimboarding, surfing, just anything I'm up to pretty much. Very cool. All right, everybody will look for you there, and then we'll look at the um, for the new Facebook stuff coming too. Kai, I know that you are such a busy guy, and I am. I'm. I'm. I know I don't know you that well, but I, and I'm old, and I'm going to say I'm so proud of you for being out there doing your thing, enjoying what life brings you, laughing at the stuff that you know you you just got to laugh at, and you really are such a great example of not just thriving blind, but just thriving as a guy out there doing this thing. So thanks for making the time for us today. Thank you. And I'd also like to mention, just as a kind of side note, that I'm also going to um, be getting a guide dog this summer or next summer. I got accepted by Guiding Eyes School, so I'm going to be out oh, there cool. for a month. Where's Guiding Eyes? I can't remember. Uh, it's up uh, right outside of New York. Uh, so oh, that's right. That's right up here. Oh, maybe we'll have to hook up with you guys because we're in the Philly area. For sure. Oh, that'd be fun. All right. Oh, ooh, then we'll do a follow-up and we'll get to meet your dog. <laughs> there you go. All right. Good stuff. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes. Thank you for having me.